Hello everyone, my name is Monty Nima and I'm a junior here in the state of Michigan and welcome to our 2020 tech series and thank you all so much for joining us today. Hi, my name is Aliyah Hirji and I'm also a junior at Novi High School. We're so excited to be the moderators of this panel today. Today we have our inspiring speaker, Savitha, an incoming freshman at Stanford. Would you like to give everyone a little introduction about yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Savitha. Thank you so much to Monsi and Aliyah for having me here today. I'm very excited to join this panel. I am a graduating senior um, from Interlake High School in Bellevue, Washington. I'm a native Seattleite, lived in the Pacific Northwest my whole life, and I am an incoming freshman at Stanford University. A bit more about myself. Um, I love conducting scientific research, dancing, and combining my background in the arts and the sciences to serve my community. So a bit more about my research. I've been conducting computational biology research throughout high school, both independently and at labs like the Harvard Medical School. And a lot of my research has been in the area of precision medicine, uh, specifically focused on how I can develop computational methods to accelerate fundamental cancer research. Um, the arts are also a really integral part of my life. I've been learning Paritnatyam or Indian classical dance for over 12 years now and I absolutely love performing, choreographing, and teaching dance. So um, a lot of people seem to think that the arts and the sciences are two very disparate fields but I think that they actually complement each other really well and for this reason I don't really like to think of myself as you know just an arts person or just a STEM person but rather someone who's more human-centered and that's the approach that I take when connecting with my community and when creating. So to this end, um, I've impacted my community in several different ways. Um, most significantly, I run two educational nonprofits, um, ArtU, which focuses on arts education, and She Codes Art, which focuses on combining CS and art to engage more minorities in STEM. So yeah, I'm excited to talk more about that today. That's so cool. It's so cool to see how you work together with both the arts and STEM to make it such an important part of your life. Can you tell us more about your nonprofits? How are you able to build such successful networks? Yeah, for sure. So I'll start off. Um, would you like me to talk about both art you and she codes or just focus on she codes art since I know that this is more both of would be great. Okay, awesome. So I'll start off with Art U because that's what um, my journey with nonprofits began. Um, as I mentioned, I am a Bharatanatyam dancer, and something that I noticed in middle school was that while the arts have been such an important part in my journey, um, arts education is something that's often the first to go with budget cuts in schools and so a lot of youth don't really have access um, to those same opportunities that i have been privileged to have and i firmly believe that the arts are um, a necessity not just a luxury in education and that was kind of why i decided to found art U. so my sister who's also a part of acting dancer um, we co-founded art U. And um, initially we began with just holding a showcase of youth performers um, every single year at my high school performing arts center. And we would have artists from different genres like um, world dance to world music um, to spoken word poetry. And every single year our showcase has just gotten bigger and bigger and that's been amazing to see. But we also began doing more focused community outreach. And we did a lot of arts outreach sessions like doing dance lecture demonstrations sessions at various festivals in the Seattle area, um, working with the Boys and Girls Club to teach dance and other visual arts. And something that we began to notice was that when we combined art and STEM, this was a way in which we could make art more accessible for youth. And it also kind of focuses on this idea of a of applied arts and that um, art and STEM really have a very unique intersection that can be very helpful for youth as they think about their career paths. And so that's when I first began to realize that um, perhaps focusing more on art and STEM outreach could be really useful. So um, I think that was kind of the 
reason why I decided to found She Codes Art, which is a sister nonprofit to Art U. And we work together on bringing arts and STEM outreach together. And um, this was kind of inspired by my own experiences as a researcher and a dancer in my APCS class, as well as at the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. I have been in a lot of situations where I've been one of very few girls in um, software. And I think that it can be quite intimidating. I think that a lot of times um, you're not really perceived as an equal when presenting your ideas. And so when I began to interview other girls, um, they told me that it was more um, the reason why they weren't as interested in STEM was because of the way CS is traditionally taught. Um, it's taught, if you think about it, when you are growing up, at least, um, things like robotics or gaming are usually perceived as more geeky or nerdy. And those are things that boys generally tend to gravitate towards too, while girls generally tend to gravitate towards more artsy activities. And so I think that I really wanted to change the way in which CS and STEM is traditionally taught. And that's what we seek to do with She Codes Art. Um, and we teach CS concepts using different art modules. So. I would say that our journey to building a successful network has been a long one and also a very difficult one. Um, she Codes Art started off with partnering with Jubilee Reach, which is a local nonprofit in Bellevue, and they serve under um, privileged elementary schoolers. And um, we began as a very grassroots initiative. It was just two of us, and we would go every week and we would work with five students at Jubilee Reach. And it was kind of um, a much smaller initiative. But um, as we began to gain momentum, we started to reach out to different organizations in our area. For example, um, Microsoft, where we got to actually hold a workshop, and um, we reached out to other organizations to provide mentors and speakers at our different conferences. So I think that's one way in which we've been able to build a network. Um, and I think as far as Art U, we have also focused on really diversifying our audiences. So um, some partners that we have built throughout the years have been the Ronald McDonald House, um, Jubilee Reach, various boys and girls centers in our area. And I think that the key is really to being very persistent and showing organizations, you know, how successful you've been in um, working with youth. I think that's really awesome to see that, like, you reached out to so many different places. And I just love the idea of bringing both art and like CS together. I think that's a really unique combination. And I think that's really important to especially change that sort of stigma sure. that you were talking about before, because I myself have related with that before. So I think that's really just awesome to see um, your work with that. And um, so our next question is sort of like, what challenges have you faced um, with your nonprofit and how did you guys overcome them? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I think there's kind of two areas in which we've had challenges. Um, the first challenge that I think we've had, as I mentioned, is establishing those partnerships. I think like now we have a very successful network, but when you're first starting off, it's very hard to kind of gain momentum. And so I would say that we've definitely met with a lot of youth skepticism in the sense that adults really don't immediately see the value that we as youth have to bring to the table. And um, I think that the way that we have just countered this has been very persistent in um, cold calling places, emailing multiple times, and then if they don't reply to your emails, you just take your team with you and you go and you show up to the organization. You're like, hi, we really want to work with your youth and we really firmly believe in this. And um, we have had these amazing results with other youth that we worked with. So I think that that's been one way in which we've been able to over come uh, the challenge of kind of establishing ourselves in the community. And I think another challenge that we've had is um, our mission is to really work with diverse youth. You know, it's easier to work with youth who are from more privileged backgrounds and who have had um, some exposure to technology and CS. Um, it's much easier connecting with them because a lot of our team members are from similar demographics. But to connect with youth who are from a demographic where they are socioeconomically disadvantaged, where they have 
never really interacted with computers or computer science. That's very different. And that's what we found out when we went to Jubilee Reach. Um, and so at first the youth there were pretty rambunctious. They didn't really pay attention during our coding lessons. And it was really hard to engage with them in a meaningful way and kind of show them the greater importance of what they were learning. But I think the way in which we were able to overcome that was really to start forming personal connections with the students and get to know them as people, um, build friendships with them. And I think, of course, the art space approach has been really critical in this because um, one of our students um, loves beatboxing and music. And so when she found out that she could like animate a dancer to like a soundtrack that she had beatbox, it just made it so much more meaningful and engaging for her. So I think that's been one way in which we've been able to tackle this challenge. I think that the work that you've been doing with both your nonprofits is so inspirational. And you can see all the determination and hard work that you put into growing them. And your journey is just Thank so you. inspirational. <laughs> and in your inspiration, you, in your introduction, you mentioned a little bit about research. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about how you got involved in research? And do you have any advice on how students can also become involved? Yeah, for sure. So um, as I mentioned, I think when growing up, I was actually much more of an arts person. Um, a lot of my summer activities or extracurricular activities were centered around dance or music. And so I actually was never really interested in like um, more traditionally like tech centered things. Um, and I think in middle school, I actually really loved biology. I was kind of interested in medicine and I wanted to be a doctor. Um, but after eighth grade, I found this computational biology summer course that was being offered in my community. And the name of the course was actually Coding for Medicine. So it's like, okay, there's medicine in this. So it can't be too bad, right? And so that's kind of how I first dipped my toes into the world of coding. And in that course, I learned Python. And what really amazed me was actually how well these two fields work together. The fact that I could translate different biology concepts um, easily into Python, you know, how we can um, look at translation and transcription and actually model that via code. And that was something that I found really interesting. And I was like, you know, I think that I actually really want to pursue my interest in this. I think it would be really cool to tackle medical challenges via computer science. And that's what sparked my interest in CS. So in my freshman year of high school, I enrolled in ABCS and I also began um, doing a lot of tutorials online, self-learning, machine learning concepts, because I was seeing a lot of scientific papers in which AI was applied to medicine. So I wanted to start learning these machine learning concepts. I looked at different tutorials. And in my freshman year, I actually began working on an independent research project in which I built a convolutional neural network, which is basically machine learning technique used for image recognition to diagnose melanoma from images that it's been trained on. And so this was kind of how I first got into the world of research and it was definitely really difficult. Um, I didn't have mentorship and so it was really just a journey of reading papers, going online, finding tutorials, and kind of stumbling my way through it. Um, but what really motivated me to keep on going on with this was that I qualified for the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair and when I saw so many other inspirational projects there I was like wow this is something that I want to keep on doing so um, in my sophomore year I again worked on another independent research project um, this one was um, on basically identifying enhancers which um, are regulatory elements that control how much a certain gene is expressed. So identifying enhancers is critical um, to helping find cures for diseases like cancer. Um, it's more at the genetic level. So I developed different machine learning techniques for identifying limb enhancers in mice and I again had the chance to take this to ISEP. So I think that's kind of how I got into research. It's been more of like an independent journey. And then after that, I had the opportunity to attend the Research Science Institute where I got one of my first experiences working in an actual lab um, in the Harvard Medical School at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, where I again um, got to work on developing machine learning techniques to accelerate um, cancer blockade therapy research. So that was really interesting for me. And I think um, that, seeing that interaction between wet lab biologists and um, computer scientists firsthand in my experience this past summer was something that I found super, super cool. And I definitely want to do more of it in college. 
That's so cool. Um, so far, this interview has been super eye-opening and the connections you can make between STEM and art and medicine. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool to see like everything that you've been doing. Thank you. Um, so soon, a lot of rising seniors will be applying for college. And one of the big parts of that is applying for scholarships. So do you have any advice for students on applying for scholarships and how you can stand out? Yeah, I think um, definitely applying for scholarships is really important. And I think that my advice would just be to like be really authentic and be really passionate about what you're doing. I know it sounds cliche, but I think it's one of the main philosophies that I've had. I think everything that I've done has been something that I truly care about and that I've truly invested a lot of time in. So I think rather than spreading yourself thin, you should really, you know, choose a couple things that you're really passionate about, kind of go deep into them. And in your essays or whatever, show that you really care about the work that you're doing. And I think that's one way that you can stand out in scholarships. Uh, I think it's just really like awesome to see like how you mentioned before about the work that you're doing with this research and then like Aaliyah was talking about like scholarships it's like so clear that you have you're clearly so passionate about the work that you do and I think that's really um, exciting to see. Um, so do you have any like other general advice for students listening? This is like more of like a tech series just so we can give like helpful advice and information to students like interested in pursuing a STEM career, even if they're not interested in um, that sort of path, but it's just really to give advice to students from the experts. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think one piece of advice I would have is don't focus on how you want others to see you, but rather focus on like, you know, what actually makes you happy. Because I think ultimately in life, um, you want to be doing something that you're actually passionate about and that you care about. So I think it's easy to see a lot of other people and kind of get caught up in what they're doing and feel like, oh, I'm not enough. I'm not, I'm not doing enough. Um, but I think that if you just really um, delve deep into what you care about, you will find a way to excel at that. And that's what really matters ultimately. It doesn't even really matter what college you go to, as long as you have the ability to take what you love and go deep into it, to self-learn, to self-study, or to learn effectively from others. And I think that that's what will ultimate, ultimately make you successful in whatever career you choose to pursue. So, yeah, I think um, I think focusing on relationships with people, focusing on connecting with others is something that's really important and that makes you grow more as a person. So I would say don't lose sight of that throughout high school. Um, make sure you do that in whatever way you can and step out of your comfort zone. I think that for me, at least being from Bellevue, I'm in a minority majority. So my high school is definitely like that too. And so I had to very consciously remind myself that the world is not like this. And um, that's really why I think I invested so much of my time in outreach because it, rem it introduced me to so many youth with really Really different and diverse stories from my own and um, it helped ground me in like kind of reality so I think that that's something I would say as advice. It's so cool and so inspirational. We're really grateful to have you here on our panel and it was so nice meeting you. Yeah awesome. I thought that you just had like such great advice and like all the work that you've been doing from your nonprofit to research and we can't wait to see all the amazing things that you continue to do.